Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is uh, Claudel petrin Rosé. I'm a family doctor and associate clinical professor at the Faculty of Medicine of University of Montréal. And uh, for the last couple of years, I've been fortunate enough to collaborate with the Lancet Countdown International team as a co-author of the Canadian Policy Brief. Our political briefs aim to translate what science is telling us into real concrete policy asks that can meaningfully and, and positively impact people's health across the country. We believe that doing so will help shape a healthier response to the big and complex challenge that is uh, climate change. I work as a family doctor in, in Montreal in a district that has its share of so social ecological injustices, poor air quality, lack of green spaces, industrial pollution, rural traffic, and difficulty to access to high quality and fresh food. The people that I am called to care for are among some of the most vulnerable in, in the face of climate change. Um, so what we cover in our briefs every year is, um, is very concrete to me as it's something I, I, I deal with on a daily basis in, in my clinic. Um, and especially this year as um, we've looked into adaptation to extreme weather events and sustainable food systems. Um, we've known for many years now that um, climate change is the biggest threat to health of the 21st century. The impacts we know will be felt on every single one of us, but even more unequally felt by the most vulnerable and on the ones who have contributed the least to the crisis. However, the good news is, and, and, and we know that from, from science, is that acting on climate change is actually good for our health. It offers us an opportunity to improve people's health directly, for instance, by improving air quality and to decrease growing health inequities. My hope in, in, in doing this is, 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 is lie right there is that we, we know that as health professionals, what we, what we want is, is to create a healthier world and, and tackling climate change actually offers us that chance. Um, and this also what, what has guided us in this writing of this year briefs. Uh, my colleagues, Dr. Courtney Howard and Maya Kalargiru will, will go deeper in some of the content of the brief, uh, but I'll take this opportunity right now just to highlight a few elements. Um, as you know, many of us across the country have had a difficult summer. Um, some cities, as in Montreal, has experienced simultaneously smoke and extreme heat. Um, it's a deadly combo, um, and, it, and, it, and it has endangered people's lung, people's heart, people's brain. Entire communities and hospitals have been evacuated in several provinces and territories, adding pressure on some already severely strained healthcare systems. Current assessments uh, put us on track for a three, degree, three degrees warmer world by the end of the century. And in some part of the country, we expect average temperatures to even increase by up to 70, seven degrees. Our adaptation capacities may soon reach their limits. Um, and this highlight even more than ever, the urgency to transition away from, fossil fuel, from a fossil fuel based economy and to reduce our emissions. Um, and this needs to happen today and at a much quicker speed than what we've, we've seen happening in the last couple of years. Um, especially in Canada, I think we need to stop subsidizing the fossil fuel industries and government policies must, must direct funding and investment, including the one of the big banks toward renewable and efficient sources of energy. Our second, our second set of recommendations in, in this year briefs um, tackle our response to extreme weather events, such as, such as uh, wildfires. About two years ago, our policy brief put forward a recommendation on the need to develop a national adaptation plan. This policy ask um, has been heard by the federal government and we're happy about that. Um, and so we have now a, plan, a national adaptation plan on the federal level. However, what we've noticed is that the last couple of years have shown us that we need to allocate more resources to adaptation planning and ensure that the communities, especially First Nations, are fully integrated in a culturally safe way into disaster prevention and response planning policies. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, there are several areas in which climate action in, can result in clear benefits for health. And our third section of this year briefs focuses on one of these areas the need to transform our food systems from the intensive agricultural practices that we have um, to the way we manage food waste. Our health will directly benefit if we shift towards less carbon intensive diet. Um, and we, we believe that hospital and schools can lead by example by serving menus based on the principle of a planetary health diet. 
in short, and I will finish right here, is that addressing climate change um, provides clear benefits for people's health um, for today and, and, and of future generations. And I hope you will join us in, in framing climate change as a health issue, because science has shown us that by doing so, we help boost public support toward efficient climate policies. Thank you.